Some of the words people use on Kaggle can be pretty confusing, especially if you're new to the community. So I put together a Kaggle vocabulary guide to help you get started. Let's go. So you might have heard people say something like this on Kaggle, check out my kernel, it's doing well on the public LB and I think it'll still be high ranking after the shakeup. And you might have been extremely confused. And sometimes it can feel like there's a Kaggle vocabulary dictionary that everyone got but you. Uh, and that's very much not the case, uh, but people who've been on the site for a while have developed their own way of talking. So today I'm going to run you through some of the words you might hear and what they mean and how to use them. First of all, what is Kaggle? Kaggle is the home of data science. We've got code, data, uh, forums, and places for you to chit chat and learn new things, ways to sharpen your skills like competitions and courses. Uh, and of course, you, uh, our Kaggle community. Uh, Kaggle itself is a made up word. Anthony Goldblum, the Kaggle CEO, generated it with a computer. Uh, and it rhymes with gaggle, which is the English word for a group of geese. So I've got a little picture of some geese here if you're not entirely sure what those birds are like. You might also have heard people talking about kernels. Kernels mean a lot of different things, especially in the data science context. But on Kaggle specifically, that refers to our hosted coding environment. Um, hosted means that it runs in your browser, so Chrome or you know Edge or Safari or whatever web browser you're using without downloading anything. And it lets you write, run, and also share data science code. Uh, and you can also, of course, use code that other people have shared. There's two types. There are notebooks, which are hosted Jupyter notebooks, which let you write text and code together. And then there are scripts, which are raw files. So Python, Python 3 only, R or R Markdown. Um, R Markdown lets you write R code and uh, text next to each other, sort of similar to a Jupyter notebook. Uh, and Kernelier is uh, this friendly little guy, uh, and it will, it's a bot, and it will write a kernel for any data set you upload. Some more kernel stuff. You may hear people talking about cells. This is a concept from notebooks. Uh, and cells are editable blocks of code or text. So I have some examples here with a uh, code cell with a gray background and then a text cell with a white background. Docker. Dockers are types of containers, which I think of as file systems from your computer. Uh, we have two, one for Python, one for R. And what these do is they let you run code that you have written on Kaggle on your local computer. So if you want those, you can get them from our GitHub. I will warn you, they are kind of large because they have everything installed that we've installed for you on kernels. And that's a lot of packages. And finally, committing. Uh, committing is a idea from source or version control. And basically what it does is it runs all your code from top to bottom. Uh, it creates uh, a nice finished HTML version that you can share with other people. So it sort of makes it look like a blog post. Um, and it also, uh, you can refer back to the version that you've committed later on. So I think about it as a, uh, like a save file in a video game. If you're about to do something risky, like change your code and you wanna be able to go back to where you were later on, you'd probably wanna commit then. Competitions. Uh, everybody knows about Kaggle competitions. Well, that's not true. Many people know about Kaggle competitions, and we've got a lot of different types. So featured competitions are the competitions that uh, generally have the biggest prizes. These are often run by corporations. Maybe they have a problem they want some new approaches on, uh, or they want to improve on an existing solution they have. Those are almost always supervised machine learning. So um, there is information on what the right answer is, and you're trying to get the right answer for each observation. Analytics competitions are not supervised machine learning. So these might be, um, for example, to help uh, propose a rule change for the NFL to reduce the number of head injuries is an example of the an, an analytics competition. Uh, and a lot of these are for nonprofits. Not all of them are for corporations. Research competitions are a little bit more theoretical. Generally, they're run by researchers. Uh, and if you win a research competition, you usually have to write a research paper and then present it at a conference like uh, NeurIPS or ICML, usually a machine learning conference. Getting started competitions. If you've never done any competitions before, these are the ones you want to start with. And we actually erase the leaderboard every couple months. So if you try it out and you do badly, it'll disappear. No one has to know. Uh, and finally, playground competitions. These are just problems we thought were cool and that you might like to play around with. So we've had some cryptography ones, some optimization ones, different types of, you know, playgrounds, things to play around with. 
Uh, and if you hear people talking about points and rankings, the only way that you can get points to improve your ranking in competitions is through featured and some of the research competitions, and you'll uh, it'll be noted in the competition description. So more competitions lingo. In class is what people can use, and by people I mean you, anybody, uh, to host their own Kaggle style competition. So a lot of people use them for courses, but uh, I've also seen people using them for hackathons and meetups. And I guess if your family is full of nerds, it could be like a fun family reunion activity, I guess. I don't know, for any reason you can do a, uh, a Kaggle competition within class. All competitions, whether they're in class or run by Kaggle, have a leaderboard. So we have an example over here. And a leaderboard shows the ranking for all the scores for the entries uh, that have been made so far. Uh, and there are two leaderboards. So this is a public leaderboard. That's the one you see during the competition. And there's a private leaderboard. Generally, you only see this after the competition is ended and generally it's scored on a different set of data. So if you have a model that's really, really good on the data on the public leaderboard, you might actually be overfitting. And then when the private leaderboard is revealed and prizes are awarded based on the private leaderboard, you might find that your rank has suddenly dropped. So the change in ranks between the public and private leaderboard is called the shape up. Um, so I mentioned usually people go down if they're overfitting. You can go up if you're following best practices, you, you know, you're doing your cross validation, you're uh, using regularization, you're just really striving to avoid overfitting. Uh, you must also peel, people talk about being in the money uh, and people at the rank that are in the money. So here it has a light, a light green background and above after the shakeup will receive prize money if it's a competition that offers prize money. Uh, and then below that, uh, so people who are in the money also get gold medals. Uh, and then below that we have people who get just gold medals, just silver medals and then bronze medals. Something else people talk about in competitions is leakage. And this is actually a general machine learning term. And the idea is that you have information about your target variable and it's included in your training data, usually unintentionally. So a classic example is you're trying to identify pictures of a specific type of flower and all of the pictures of that specific type of flower were taken with one camera and all of the other pictures were taken with a different camera. So you build a camera detector, which is very accurate on your test data. But then when you want to go and identify pictures of those flowers taken with different types of cameras, it's not actually a helpful model. Uh, another example would be if you're trying to determine if somebody will get an illness uh, and you have information about whether or not they were treated for that illness. So treatment would occur after diagnoses and you're trying to figure out what the diagnosis is. Uh, but if you have information from the future, then it's not actually going to be helpful for you later on when you're trying to apply that model. Um, and we do a lot of work to uh, really minimize competition leakage, uh, but sometimes you'll hear people talking about it. So that's what they mean. Finally, the progression system. So Kaggle has a five tier progression system. Everybody starts as a novice. Everyone on Kaggle was a novice once. Uh, and then there's a checklist of things you can do. And once you finish that, you are a contributor. And the reason that you'd want to go through the checklist is because once you're a contributor, your vote starts to count for awarding people medals. Uh, medals are important for moving from the expert, master, and grandmaster tiers. Uh, so there are actually three different ways to become a grandmaster. You can do it through discussion posts. So a lot of people have upvoted a lot of your posts and they've gotten medals. Kernels, uh, again, a lot of uh, people upvoting a lot of your kernels. So kernels, again, are your code that you've shared. Uh, and competitions. And for competitions, you need to get a certain number of medals for a certain number of competitions. Uh, and again, medals are uh, calculated based on a number of things, but mainly the number of non-novice votes on, they're all based on votes, but the non-novice votes only count. And there's some, some other stuff we do to avoid um, abuse. It is pretty tricky to become a grandmaster. So we have more than 3 million Kagglers right now. I took these counts in June of 2019. And we only have about 145 competitions grandmasters, 11 kernels grandmasters, and then 12 discussion grandmasters. So it's a pretty small elite group, uh, but you can get there with hard work and dedication and by contributing to the community uh, and producing useful content. I believe in you. All right, so that's all the Kaggle vocabulary that I wanted to introduce you to do today. Uh, and now that you know some of the words that people are using on Kaggle, I hope I can see you on the site, in the forums, or uh, entering competitions, or writing some kernels. I love seeing people's kernels. So I will see you on Kaggle. Bye.